So this is the blueprint for the coat rack. Um, just know that we have a handful of things right here. Again, your back plate of the coat rack is eight by five of three sixteenths material. All right. You do need one horseshoe and you do need a piece of angle iron. I have here spec'd out inch and a half by inch and a half by eighth inch that is four inches long. And then you need basically a three sixteenths saw round bar and approximately like five inches of it. But if you had a little bit more like eight or 10 uh, to bend your hooks, then you'd be all right. Okay. Um, these are your grading parameters. You need to have your material cut and prepped, tacked together, uh, all the edges deburred. Again, that's your 12 points. Then you'll have four welds and four oxyfuel cuts graded. Again, anything over a two uh, or less than a two will be a half point. Anything over a three will be a full point. Um, this I have drawn up here is a letter M for Masic, but again, yours is going to look different. Uh, it could be a T or a W, maybe it's an S. Just know that we have this bar that goes across the top and sometimes a bar drawn in on the bottom so that you can punch these holes so they can mount to a stud on your wall. All right, you can place these hooks almost anywhere you'd like. Uh, they can hang off the bottom of that bar that's up here at the top, or they could be on the sides. Um, this piece of angle iron, again, we want about a 45 degree angle and centered in that plate. The horseshoe, just close it up to that bottom where you don't melt through that hole. All right, uh, bending the horseshoe and the angles that you bend it and where you bend it, that's going to be a personal preference. Just know that you need to have the horseshoe facing down for this bend at the tip and facing up at this end for the heel to get this zigzag, okay? And um, that's about it. It's pretty simple, probably the most easy going. Just remember the weld symbols we've got right here. Uh, we are going to weld this all with FCAW, uh, a 3 16 weld. You're going to have a one inch weld top and bottom at least in the middle. Okay, that's going to make sure your horseshoe stays on. And then you're going to have a one and a half dash two and a half weld up here on the top. And what that means is you're going to have an inch and a half weld spaced out two and a half center to center. It essentially works out that you have an inch and a half weld on either end, but that's how it will be written out. And then your process FCAW right there. Uh, the note will stay that uh, you need at least these two welds centered, but if possible, add a couple more. But you're gonna have one, two, three, four welds graded total, all right? Okay, good luck, that's. All right, so on the horseshoe, we're trying to get the horseshoe to kick and kick. So it'll lay flat against something, but then also bend out and then back up. So we want the tips of the horseshoe right now actually to bend backwards. So if I were to put this in with the horseshoe facing up right there in the shear, it would actually bend those out. So I'm going to take the horseshoe and I've already cleaned this up. You can leave it rusty and covered in all sorts of stuff if you'd like, or you can take the time to clean it up. So when I put this in on the uh, shear, I'm going to actually put this face down. And that will allow those tips to point back. As this comes in, it breaks this up. Okay. And I'm going to take a look at both sides. You can see how that's kind of lined up there. And it's lined up on the tips right there, kind of flush with that edge. And we don't need much of a bend. You can see that's not much. You can go more or less, but we're just trying to get a smooth, slight bend. So again, that one was facing down in the break. Now we're kind of going to cause this to face up in the break. And this will allow the horseshoe to kick forward a little bit. Try and make sure that you keep it lined up, maybe with the holes uh, or something of the sort so you don't bend it sideways or crooked. But again, this is going to be facing up. So I'm just going to make sure that those brakes are in that block nice and square. 
And there you have it. Just a little bit will do you. And now when we put this on, you can see that it's going to kick out and you can hang your coat or jacket, sweater, beanie on either side of your horseshoe. Next thing, we need to bend the hooks for the coat rack. And if you have a larger piece, that's fine. Uh, I have a bunch of these cut about three feet already. Cut a smaller chunk, polish it up. It is easier a little bit with the leverage, a longer piece, but with a hammer, you can make this work out. So I usually will uh, clamp this in right past the jaws. And so I know that I've got um, about an inch or so down in there. Tighten it, and we're just going to lightly tap this over. And right now we're shooting for that 45 degree or so that is off the front. Not rocket science too much, but you just want to try and get it as close as possible. Now this next bend is going to be the, the back. I'm bending it up. So again, right around the same amount. And some people have asked Mastic, why don't you just bend it over? Well, if I bend it over, you can see that it's starting to flex. It's not actually a nice crisp bend if I just pull on it. I can pull on it, but it'll be more of a swooping radius than a crisp bend. So having the hammer is what helps make it nice and clean uh, and a nice sharp bend. So we're gonna take this hammer and we're just gonna, this one's gonna get bent all the way over. If it moves a little bit, just move it back. Okay, now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, turn it around. And this just gives me more to work with. Ideally, you really only need about five inches of this solid bar but having it a little bit longer does help kind of clean it up. Sure, we'll have some waste, but it won't be very much. You'll notice that they are a little skiwampus, and that's all right. You can take, these aren't bent exactly flat, but you can take them on here, on this little anvil side of the, the vise, and you can flatten them out. You can cut this in the shear, or you can use a uh, grinder or cutoff wheel. So we'll show you how to do the shear. I'm gonna come up that inch and a half, and I'm gonna make a mark or so right here. Flip this around, and I'm gonna do the same thing about an inch and a half. Make a mark, all right? So now that I've got my marks on here, and these could be cut long, and you can always trim them down. There's our two hooks. Now, if these wind up being too short to actually clamp in the shear, then you are gonna have to use a grinder with the cutting wheel. There is a little bit of a burr on this end because of the shear. You can take a grinder or a hand file and clean those up. All right, now that I have my horseshoe bent and I have my hooks cut, my angle iron needs to get cut now. And so we're going to go show you how to use the bandsaw real quick uh, and cut a four inch piece with that. All right, so there is a video on YouTube already showing you how to use the bandsaw close up. So this will be more of a refresher. You're going to take your piece of angle iron and you're going to face it up like an A or uh, a tent. All right, it's going to be a mountain, a peak going up. You're not going to put it on its side like an L and you're not going to face it like a V as in Victor, but it's going to be a point going straight up. Measure out and cut four inches. So I usually turn the bandsaw on, turn it to manual, and slowly lower the feed head until it's just above the metal. And I'll turn it back to zero on the feed, turn it back to semi-auto on the mode. Once I have that laid out at four inches, I will clamp down on my material. It's on semi-automatic, it's on two for blade speed, coolant is auto, head feed is zero, I turn it on. I wait for coolant to start coming out, and then I turn the head feed slowly until it reaches number two. All right, and when it's done cutting, if it doesn't automatically turn off, take blade, go to zero, come back to two, turn the machine off over here on the side. You have your four inch piece of angle iron that you can clean up and make look uh, like what you want. You can leave it a little rusty, that's up to you. You can see those marks. We're gonna punch those on the shear. So remember that the half inch hole is on the bottom and the three eighths is at the top. 
All right, so you can see that I just went over it with a Sharpie real quick so you can see those lines. And we're just gonna go ahead and oxyfuel cut it. I don't wanna start my oxyfuel cut up in here. Uh, I'm gonna cut in and then probably cut in. And that'll help leave that nice and crisp. Up here, I'm gonna have to probably pierce and then cut over and then around. Uh, but I'll cut in and down and in and down on those as well. So to cut this out, um, again, we'll do a little bit of preheat. I actually like using some of these extra dust pans that we have because they're nice and hefty, if you didn't notice. They don't move very easily. So you can actually set them along an edge and use them as a guide for your cutting tip. So let's go ahead and cut this side first. Going to leave that right there. I want to make sure that I can run that torch down there like that. Open the bottom all the way, light that, get rid of the soot. I'm going to cut the top little quarter inch thing first. All right. Now let's start here at the bottom. All right, wonderful. Flick that out of the way. Rotate this over to the other side. All right, so here's our letter. Uh, I didn't preheat this side enough, and so I had a couple different blowouts right there where it stopped cutting. Everything else turned out pretty decent. You would take the time at this point to grind some of this dross off the back and kind of clean it up, and then you're ready to start welding it together. Okay, go ahead and get your welder turned on, get it set up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this tack together. After you get your letters cleaned up, again, you can grind the back side and get it nice and pretty. And then we're going to go ahead and tack it together, all right? So when we are going to tack this together, um, we're going to make sure we're, we have it facing the right direction. With an M, it doesn't matter too much, left or right, or I guess forward or back, but there could be like a C where you accidentally put it back, okay? We want to make sure that's facing upright. Grab one of those squares we use for the cube, and this is how I will put this on here, is I will grab this and tack it or clamp it on here nice and flat, and then this is just going to get centered again, right? So you just want to make sure it's touching all the way across that it's flat. You could measure that. It's supposed to be three quarters of an inch. So you could mark a three quarter and a three quarter down. Now that it's on there, I'm gonna give it a tack by my gun. That just makes sure that your angle iron is in that right upright spot, okay? So because of the way uh, the M sat, on here and how high my ho the horseshoes are different sizes. So some of these horseshoes are a little bit bigger than others. So you wanna make sure that that horseshoe doesn't come up too close to your angle iron that you couldn't get a coat comfortably on there. So what I did is I'm gonna actually move this down just above that bottom hole and I punched another hole right above it. And so we're gonna do that. And it, again, you just might have to adjust this on the fly depending on the letter you do. But we're gonna go ahead and clamp that down with our spring clamp. Love these things. Okay, so now we got this tacked on here. We'll go ahead and we'll run a bead and a bead. We need at least two beads on here that are opposite of each other. If you can get uh, a couple others, that's great. Once we get those ones on here, we'll weld our inch and a half long beads up here along the top, and then we'll put our hooks on last. Go quench it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and might use a spring clamp again, just to keep that in place. 
So there is our coat rack, real simple, nothing too complicated. Um, this top part is a nice little place that you can rest uh, your cell phone or any or wallet. You have a place you can put your keys, you can rest your beanie, hoodies, coats off of your uh, horseshoe here. As we look at this, you might be able to get away with just one, a single zig instead of a zig and a zag in your horseshoe to maybe give yourself a little more clearance to hook things on. I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, make this as functional and usable for you as possible. You could paint it after this point, um, or you could leave it rusty. You don't even need to clean it up as well as I did. Uh, anything to kind of add that little decor or touch. Uh, you could make it for uh, a sibling or a parent. You don't need to do your initials if you wanted to do mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, something like that. If you want to make more of these because you've got a cabin or something like that, just let me know. We'll work out a little pricing. I do have lots of these horseshoes that I bought. So there you go. Good luck on the final project. It's going to be lots of fun. Hopefully you'll be able to use it somewhere.